Welcome to Iowa City Liberty High School, where tonight, the first Friday night of October of 2020, features the Hawks from Cedar Rapids Prairie and the Lightning of Iowa City Liberty, a team that has actually only played two games so far this year. Cedar Rapids Prairie, meanwhile, has played four. Liberty hasn't been on the field in a month. What kind of an impact will that have? These fans want to know, and so do we. We kick it off next on MC22. To Logan Wolf, cap the seven play 75. To AJ Green, Marcus Orr, the imagine is Kale O'Neill on the very next possession. Welcome to Iowa City Liberty High School, where tonight the Lightning will be hosting the Hawks from Cedar Rapids Prairie. And for Liberty, it's their first game in a month. They haven't played since September 3rd with the Iowa City Community School District doing virtual learning. Good evening, I'm Bob James along with Jerry Koala. And Jerry Prairie comes to town two and two and led by Nick Pearson as expected, having a great year with seven, or excuse me, nine rushing touchdowns and averaging more than seven yards per and carry. The Prairie Hawks are on a roll, Bob, and Nick Pearson really, uh, he's got a head of steam going. And this is a unique offense that they run and he runs it very well because the execution among the entire team is really good too. So they'll be a fun one to watch. And meanwhile, for Iowa City Liberty, their head or led, I should say, by quarterback James McKinney. McKinney's been running the football a lot, but they've been running the ball as a team a lot. Three guys with more than 20 carries and combined in two games, just seven pass attempts. Yeah, he's very athletic, uh, is James McKinney. Just a junior, so he's really getting his feet wet and, you know, on this level of, of football. Uh, he's very athletic. He can get the ball outside, runs really nicely, he throws a good ball. We'll head back to the broadcast booth and kick it off next on MC22. Football on Mediacom MC22 is brought to you by McGrath Family of Dealerships, Five Seasons Tire, the Tom Riley Law Firm, Collins Community Credit Union, Heartland Hearing Center, and by Extreme, powered by Mediacom. Back here at Liberty Stadium, home of the Lightning of Iowa City Liberty in their third season and in their first season in Class 4A. But uh, it's been a very unique season for every team in high school football with Prairie obviously having one postponement earlier in the season. And Iowa City Liberty has had most of their season wiped out to this point. The uh, Cedar Rapids Prairie keys to the game with head coach Mark Bliss, Jerry. Well, they're gonna they got to get that running game going. They're gonna ramp it, uh, run game, and then on the defensive side, they just have to stymie that uh, Iowa City Liberty offensive set. It's Elijah Ward, the kickoff return for Prairie. Nice coverage by Liberty. A flag is down as well as he brings it just shy of the 20-yard line. Likely that will be on the return team and back Prairie up. We'll wait for the official signal from the official. Yeah, well, he didn't run very far to think that there would have to be a, a penalty like that, but sure enough. Yep, illegal block in the back, so that will back him up to the 10 yard line wow. or the nine yard line. Well, they, just a little bit further for this offense really to get going. It's such a unique thing that they do uh, on the side. Of, and for Iowa City, uh, Liberty Lightning, uh, Bob, uh, they've got to give, give a little bolt action here tonight, especially offensively. got to get things going. And then they got to place of an abundant D. they got to learn how to defend this single wing attack that uh, Cedar Rapids Prairie runs, and they run it effectively. Well, we started to mention a little bit ago, too, that Liberty hasn't played a game in almost a month. So it is uh, definitely going to be interesting to see how they knock off the rust from not being on the field on a Friday night for a month and the first play by Prairie. Very little running room. Gets up to about the 13 yard line. That's Nick Pearson who we'll see a lot of tonight. Yeah, he had a direct snap to him and I think probably when you look at uh, uh, Dua, uh, Des Newell uh, right there in the middle linebacker position, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Jeff Gordon, the head coach of Iowa City Liberty, kind of has him eyeballing Pearson all night long and go with him wherever he goes. Deontay Fliss, the quarterback for Prairie. Of course, they run that single wing. He's in the shotgun 
He's passed for 514 yards and four touchdowns so far this year. 33 of 54 through the air, and he will keep. And he's brought down at around the 20. It looks like he'll be just shy of third, uh, first down, and it'll be third and short for Prairie. Well, the thing that Prairie does, uh, Bob, is they uh, rotate their quarterbacks, and each quarterback has a different offensive set when he's out there. This is Brandon Flecko. This is kind of the running uh, attack offense, and then there's the spread offense that uh, uh, Deontay Fliss will be a part of. Uh, and they do it effectively both ways. And you see the offensive starters for Prairie tonight, Fierro, Dolly, DeFlieger, Ripley, Hayden Felt, along with Dirksen, Bohr, Scott, Pearson, Fetters, and as we mentioned, Volko at the quarterback position. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty experienced offensive group, but they just know how to run this offense effectively. And Prairie gets the first down, breaking into the clear, cutting it back into the middle of the field, up to the 45-yard line. That is a big first down carry for Brandon Volko. Yeah. He got off on that right side, and again, you know, it's a direct snap to him, and he's the quarterback, and he just followed that offensive line. They're doing some misdirection uh, movement in that backfield, and you can see that he had a, a couple lanes to run through. He's able to find it, quick speed, gets all the way out to the 46. Big play there for Prairie to move the chains, and obviously Iowa City Liberty was hoping to uh, get him on a three and out. 26-yard gain by Volko. On that third down carry, he's over on the sideline shaking out that right hand a little bit. Hopefully he's okay. And Prairie goes and keeps it on the ground once again. Carrying it this time is Nick Fetters, and Fetters is run out of bounds right over in front of the Prairie bench. But he has another first down for the Hawks. Well, they spread their offense to the left, the strength of it, and they uh, send Fetters back on an inside counter. And it works beautifully to perfection. He picks up enough yardage for another first down. And the defensive starters tonight for the Liberty Lightning, Schultz, as well as Lucy, Fangman, Miller, Newell, Kraft, Peoples, Fishman, Miller, Adam, and Myers at those defensive back spots. Lots of things to think about for a defense and another nice carry. That is once again Fetters with the ball. And what happens is they start thinking about where the ball is. They forget that they've got to tangle up with the, either an offensive lineman or a running back that's coming out there to block them, and they, and they get blocked fairly easily. So they got to hit, get off the ball very quickly and find where that football is going. Second down and three. Prairie resetting that offensive line. Strong left side of the line, and there comes Fetters again. Goes between the tackles and is inside the 30-yard line for another first down for Prairie. Well, that's the very same play that they ran before, just, uh, just a different way that they set it up and the way they used uh, that misdirection in the backfield, but they still got the same result. Prairie is, is often the case with them. Able to throw the ball, but certainly they prefer to keep it on the ground with that big offensive line, and so far so good as they march to the north end of this stadium here in North Liberty. Pearson got the direct snap and makes his way inside the 25 to around the 23 yard line. As he does that, Vileko will act like he has received the snap and turn the direction because you see uh, Fetters coming at him. And so the defense, again, trying to find where that football is. And by the time they do, sometimes Pearson or the running back who has it is already further downfield. Wow, look at that. There was some trickery on that play, and Nick Pearson takes it into the end zone pretty easily, really. As a lot of confusion on the Liberty side of the defense that time, and if I'm telling the truth, a little bit of confusion in the broadcast booth, too. That one was, uh, looked like he was going to hand it off to Fetters, but instead he just really just kind of uh, weaved his way and didn't have to do a lot of weaving. Got into the end zone pretty easily on that one for a first down for Prairie, and they're on the board first. Well, just some terrific line blocking up front. Uh, Carter Dolly at DeFlieger, Ripley at uh, the strong guard, and, and, and Bodie Haydenfeld. But it's set up because the defense is aligned so they can just get their uh, shoulders squared on and move their feet around and just open up that alley for Nick Pearson to run through. A.J. Walter, his 15th made PAT in 18 attempts, and Prairie strikes first, and they lead Iowa City Liberty by a score of 7 to nothing. just over four minutes into the first quarter. Liberty will get their first shot 
on offense when we return on MC22. There you see the star in that drive for Cedar Rapids Prairie, Nick Pearson, who has uh, had quite a season already this year running the football. And that was uh, more of the same for him on the 23 yard touchdown run and or the 19 yard touchdown run, excuse me, giving Prairie the lead. Walter the PAT, a 90 yard drive for Prairie to start. Eight plays in just over four minutes on the on the uh, clock. 33 yards he picked up on his own, but they used three running backs, uh, uh, Bob, in, including uh, Brendan Vlecko who ran the ball a couple of times and he picked up 33 yards himself. So they know how to how to balance out the running attack. Iowa City Liberty gets it. And returning with the football is Des Willis, Willis Newell. And he is brought down at about the 23 yard line. That's where the Lightning will start first and 10. Yeah, it was a Siande Adams that made the tackle on him. So, you know, that offense, the way they strike, it picks up the defense and even that kickoff team coverage to get down there and make a play. Liberty has pretty much exclusively kept the ball on the ground this year, and Prairie jumps offside. That's going to be a five-yard mark-off. It was Baxter Bohr who got a little bit ahead of the snap. Yeah, I can't, can't get uh, too anxious, especially right away. You know, the adrenaline flow is really hit hard. You know, at the very beginning of this game, you, you know, you try to make impact and after a few contact plays and you kind of settle in. McKinney, 112 yards on 19 carries in the last Liberty game against Cedar Rapids Jefferson. Hands off that time and very little real estate for the ball carrier. I believe that was Willis Newell. Indeed it was. He gives the thumbs up to the uh, Liberty sideline. It's second down and five yards to go. So no gain on that particular yep. play, Bob. And, you know, th this Prairie defense uh, certainly squeezed down from tackle to tackle. You see the offensive starters for the Lightning. Kurtz, Fangman, Beckman, Lucy, Schultz, Kraft, Miller, Fishman, Newell, Adams, and McKinney at the quarterback spot. McKinney keeps it. And nowhere to go for him, and that'll bring out third down and five yards to go. Now the defensive end on that right side just kind of crashed down on him. It was a Moses each. He saw, he saw the uh, ride into the line of scrimmage, the fake, that he didn't uh, give the football to uh, Des Newell, and, he, and McKinney tried to keep it himself and get some yardage, and he picks up nothing. Yeah, they're going to actually mark him for a one-yard loss, third down and six. The Prairie defense, each Ramirez, Ripley, Bohr, Jones, Scott, Longwell, Decker, Fetters, Richterson and Mahoney, or Richardson, excuse me. And once again, running with the football is McKinney. And once again, nowhere to go. Ball ends up on the ground, but I believe they blew it dead. It'll be fourth down for the Lightning. And it's interesting that, uh, you know, uh, Prairie has some really good linebacker play. Look at Bra Baxter Bohr crashing down from the outside, but Scott right there from his linebacker position making the first hit, Clayton Scott in the middle, and then, and then they just converge on it. You know, this uh, coaching staff at Cedar Rapids Prairie uh, you know, getting these kids, you know, to play this game in a team-oriented fashion where they gang tackle all of the time. Looked like they might have been a little uh, miscommunication that time. Looked like he wanted to hand off to Willis Newell. And the punt will come down around the 38-yard line. It's grabbed there by Baxter Bohr. Really nowhere for him to go as he's gang tackled for about a loss of a yard. And it was Cortland, Colton Forsland actually who returned that for Prairie. Yeah, nice punt uh, for Iowa City Liberty. 
34 yards. But Cedar Rapids Prairie already has built, built some steam, Bob, to get to this point. They've got the football back, and they're just going to keep running the ball right down the throat of Iowa City Liberty. They will start at their 39-yard line on their second possession of the game. What a beautiful Friday night it is. There's literally no wind. Temperatures uh, probably still in the upper 40s or so at this time. Now that's Vleco going in motion from left to right. Deontay Fliss at quarterback. And Fliss throws complete. We do have a flag down, however. You know, it's from the uh, umpire, so I'm assuming yeah, it's going to be a holding. Fast. Fast. But it was so fast, you know, that the uh, flag came out. It was Eli Ward that got the uh, chop block against Prairie. Eli Ward got the pass out on the right side, just a real quick hitter to him and let him do his thing, but it's going to go for naught. Second offensive penalty of the game against Prairie. I guess the first penalty was actually on special teams on the opening kickoff. That'll bring him back to the 29-yard line as we get a look at that replay. Uh, right there's oh yep. boy, that's not good. You can see the buck one in his knee. The defensive lineman. Hopefully he's, he's all right. Can't be going down and hitting uh, below the waist. Nope, that's exactly why the rule is in place. Fliss looks to throw again. High but caught, and Elijah Ward goes out of bounds with it around the 40-yard line. He'll mark him at the 38, I believe. Well, Eli's got some good speed out there on that nope. on either side that he lines up. Actually, they've uh, ruled it incomplete, my apologies. Second oh, down, 20. He must have been bobbling it. Nice set and a throw. Ruled incomplete, second is one. Uh, he must, must have stepped on the sideline. Yep. But they're giving him a lot of cushion out there, which will open up, you know, any kind of a, a quick out, hook pattern inside and out. See if they don't come back and run the same thing. Fliss wants to throw again. Pumps and throws, and this time inbounds to Ward on the right sideline in front of the Prairie bench. It's just a short pass, making back some of the yardage they lost on the chop block penalty. But they're setting up the long pass with the short passing game right now. And, and again, we haven't, haven't seen a run yet on this series of plays. And we probably won't see one here either on third and 13. Definitely appears to be a passing situation for Prairie. Fliss gets that snap. It's going to come near side, looks over here, and throws complete, but well short of the first down to Alex White. He's run out of bounds over here by both uh, Bo Miller and also Jacob Adam. Interesting that uh, I think Deontay just kind of, he, he, he uh, tucks a little bit too soon trying to get out of that pocket, not finding anybody. So he rolls out to his left and throws the short pass. And let's get a short gain out of it. Got to learn to stick in that pocket a little bit and let your receivers run their route because they, they had to go at least 13 yards, Bob, to get a first down. You got to go at least 10 anyway. Yeah, well shy of that. Fourth down and eight yards to go. Punting situation for Prairie. And the ball is dropped by the punter. Now he's going to try and run for it. And instead, he'll be tackled. And that was Sam Braxick. So it's going to be fantastic field position now for Liberty after a great chase by Des Willis Newell to make that stop. He wasn't going to let uh, Braxick get away at all. You know, went through his hands. Now, this is what a cool night like tonight will do. It, it, it kind of, you, your hands might have a little bit of perspiration on them, and that ball uh, probably a little bit harder than, than normal. I mean, it's not frozen type, but you don't have the same grip on it. And I think he just took his eye off it for the moment and slipped through his hands off his shoulder pads into the ground. You can see the fantastic speed that Willis Newell has as he closed that gap in a hurry. On first down, grabbed from behind and pulled down is the quarterback, McKinney. He will lose a yard on first down. Well, you know, if I would say the Liberty's offensive line is going to close down on their splits, it, it's going to play into the hands of uh, Cedar Rapids Prairie's defense because they can contain the outside and they can gap the middle where you can't block them all and you don't have much running room. So uh, hopefully, I would say the Liberty will notice that and, and maybe at least add four to five inches of, of uh, split time in their uh, distance, that is, in their offensive line. Getting around the 
and it's Gabriel Avalos, and he is going to take it. No, it's actually not Avalos, but Michael Miller who takes it into the end zone. And just like that, the Liberty Lightning on a 29-yard run by number 29 or within a point. A 32-yard run, excuse me, by Michael Miller. Very nice. Just a simple jet sweep, if you will. They got the right blocking on the right side, sealed everybody off. Here he comes. And you can just see that once he got by Baxter Bohr, then it was just outrun the rest of the defense, and he did just that. But it was set up nicely. You know, Cedar Rapids Prairie, they were in the right position for the uh, offensive line and those uh, downfield uh, receivers to block. Open up some uh, lanes. Emerson Bennett for the PAT. It is good, and that ties things up at 7-7. Seven, seven. See it again. Here comes Miller. We're on that right side. Now he's looking for that opening, finds it, dashes right through it and beyond any Cedar Rapids Prairie defender right into the end zone. Right. Liberty has some, you know, very good athletes, you know, very fast athletes. And, you know, they lost a lot from last year's team. They had a number of seniors that were quite good. Uh, and I know, you know, Jeff Gordon, uh, not at all worried about it, but you know, he knew coming up from the sophomore team and then last year's juniors to this year's seniors, they were going to have, you know, a, a decent football team. And unfortunately, like you said, in, in the outside of this broadcast, they haven't played for a month. Yeah. You know, so you don't really get a chance to, to see exactly what they have. Yeah, Liberty in their first season in 2018 was seven and three, and then three and six a year ago. But as we mentioned, 2020, kind of a different ball game for them in a variety of ways, including the fact that it's their first season in class 4A. It, again, they've done the right way, Bob, taking their time, uh, let the school uh, get it adapted you know, to the environment, let the ath athletes, and remember, they only uh, they they required the ninth and tenth graders who were had been in the new redistricting uh, for the, uh, the high school, for the school uh, district. To, they required the ninth and tenth graders to come to uh, school here at, at Liberty. Then the juniors and seniors, if they wanted to stay at City High, if that's where they were at, they could stay, or at Iowa City West. But after two years, then everybody inside the district, uh, the address was going to have to come to, to Liberty. So, you know, slowly but surely, they, they built, uh, you know, the image here at, uh, I would say, the Liberty as we take a look at uh, Mark Bliss. Yeah, what a re career he has had. 195 and 76 in 26 years of coaching and 36 and 19 during his now seven years at Cedar Rapids Prairie. Had a terrific career uh, before he got to the state of Iowa where you know, the thing that people will remember the most is the four state championships he won at uh, the previous high school he was at. So he knows how to win. He knows how to get there. And it's interesting, you know, people, I, I listen to people complain a lot about the, the kind of offense that they're running, you know, because it's, you know, it's not in the new trend of, you know, the spread off offenses and stuff. Well, that's what Mark Bliss was in before. He was into that, those kind of offenses. And, he, you know, he told me, and this is a good couple of years ago, that, you know, he wanted something new. He needed something different. And, and he went to a couple of coaching clinics and, got connected with a high school coach that uh, taught him the, the single wing. He didn't know anything about the single wing because he himself as a quarterback when he was in college, loved running the spread and that kind of thing. But you can still run a lot of spread plays, a lot of good passing plays out of the offense that they're running now. It's just a lot of misdirection, uh, misdirection uh, and faking. Well, and we saw that the last time they had the ball with, uh, I mean, they threw every play. Of course, part of that was they had to after the Chop block penalty on first down made it, uh, you know, a, a long yardage situation right away. Nice return up the sideline, keeping his feet somehow. Elijah Ward has finally dropped at the 45 yard line as he tiptoed right along the sideline in front of the Liberty bench. Nice return. Yeah, you got to have to be careful though as a return man. You're running straight up and down like that. You're setting yourself yeah. up for some kind of, you know, punishing hit from a defender. You gotta know how to take those hits, but you gotta deliver it while you're taking a hit. Like Elijah kind of felt that one because it hit him in the right side. Prairie lost a couple of players a week ago to injury on just some awkward hits. Pearson dropped after a two yard gain. Nice job by that Liberty defense. Getting in there to bring him down. And once again, we'll call Willis Newell's number 23 as he was in on the stop along with Colton Fangman. I'm going to watch uh, 
for sure what Newell's doing on this uh, on these defensive plays because I think he's uh, been assigned to manhandle to stay right with uh, Nick Pearson. It'd be like in basketball, you know, uh, box and one. Well, they're yep. playing a ten and one. You know is what it is here, and I think Newell's kind of uh, keeping his eye on Pearson. Pearson again on the direct snap. And he is able to break into the clear, came out of the pile, and will have first down yardage inside the 35 before he stepped out of bounds at the Liberty 33. He's one of those runners, uh, Bob, where you can't just bump him to get him down. You're going to have to hit and wrap. He got the direct snap to him. You know, he half turned like he was going to hand the ball off to Fetters, and so I think that throws off the defense a little bit. 5'10", 180 is Pearson. Senior running back and linebacker who had a fantastic season a year ago when he ran for 27 touchdowns and almost 1,800 yards. And on first down, it's Volko who carries the football. Well, Blecko, the running quarterback out of the two, but he can throw the football. His dad played at Prairie, uh, graduating, I believe, in 1990 before he went on to play at Cove. But it's a direct snap to him. They pulled that left side guard, and he just follows all of those people, those white jerseys. And you can see how determined they are to make those blocks. That's six on first, uh, first down, second and four. You see Blecko, 6'3", 185-pound junior. And there's Pearson again up the gut. Stepping out of tackles, and he will be first and goal inside the 10 near the 6. Doesn't need a lot of space. He knows how to get through there. And that was right over top of center. So in their sequence of running plays, Bob, I mean, they've got plays that called for right, you know, on the right guard, over the center, and the left guard. Look at him. He just, yeah. you know, they, they just opening up holes for him. Did a good job at the end of that, too, hanging on to the football as a couple of defenders for... Liberty were trying to get it away from him. I believe it was Luke Myers who actually got a hand on the ball, but not to take away from Pearson. He was hanging on tight, and he'll get it again on first down. Pushes his way down to about the two. They line him up in the right behind the center, and they uh, squeeze down their splits in the offensive line. They've got wing backs and wing back. I mean, it's such a tight formation. They're, they're uh, throwing more blockers at the defenders because the defenders have to spread out. So on the right side or the left side, depending on the strength of the formation, They'll have an advantage uh, with blockers over defenders. Second down, goal to go. And again, Pearson gets the direct snap and follows that big offensive line into the end zone. And Prairie retakes the lead. At the 148 mark here of the first quarter. Again, just straight ahead push. You can see that offensive line, that big old white wall, a wall of white jerseys, if you will. Nick just follows right along. Some big boys up front, including Evan Williams, 6'6", 285. Prairie going to go for two. And over the head of the intended receiver, trying to get it to Adam Longwell. Just a little bit too tall for him. And it's a six-point lead for Prairie at Iowa City Liberty. We'll get the ball back here with 1.47 to go. And here's the touchdown run. And this is a direct snap uh, to Nick Pearson. And into the end zone. We're going to see a lot of that. You know, I saw him play against Cedar Falls a couple of weeks ago. And after Cedar Falls ran back the opening kickoff for a score, Prairie just went on a, on a haul of scoring. And they did it all on the ground. They, they, they had some passing uh, in there as well that helped open up the running game. But I think that was the night that they got that running game going, uh, Bob, because they've been on a terror since that time. You know, their first two losses were by a total of four points, you know. Lost to Kennedy when they had a lead on Kennedy at halftime. And then they went to Dubuque Senior. Just didn't play very well against Senior, but really credit Senior because it has a pretty good football team there, the Rams do. Yeah, that uh, Kennedy game, a one-pointer, 35-34, and then lost by a field goal to Dubuque Sr. A nice drive there, six plays, 55 yards, and the two-yard run by Pearson. It took just over two and a half minutes for Prairie to retake the lead. And a couple of weeks back, this Prairie team beat Cedar Falls 34-21. They were postponed against City High and then beat Linmar 42 to nothing. They'll end the regular season next Friday night against Cedar Rapids, Washington when they play on Cedar Rapids South Side at John Wall Field. Well, so Nick Pearson carried the ball five times out of the six plays. The only other uh, runner 
person to run the ball was uh, Brandon Vlecko. Uh, Pearson with five carries and 41 yards. You know, this stadium, I was just thinking, kind of has the same feel as John Wall Field, doesn't it? You know, it does. A little bit rural, fields nearby. And uh, plenty of space around it. Liberty hits the uh, football at the 13-yard line, returning up the near sideline. Another great run. There's that same young man again, Michael Miller, with a beautiful return, and he'll set Liberty up with terrific field position at their own 47. Interesting that the return was on this side of the field. I always, you always want to do it on the home side. And, you know, they got that picket gate going. Block, another block, and he's got Michael Miller with some really good speed. He needed really just one more block, Bob, and he probably would still be running. He'd be on his way to Corville right now. Finally pulled down by McGuire Jones. Liberty, not surprisingly, a, a change at quarterback. We're going to see Ty Hughes in there now. And a flag flies, delay of game. Hughes has uh, played a little bit at the quarterback spot. 0 for 3 so far for him through the air on the season. This is a Liberty team that much prefers to run the football with just seven pass attempts in their first two games. Well, I see McKinney uh, standing on the sideline down here, so it's not evident that he doesn't have some kind of a minor injury. I'm not sure if Jeff Gordon uh, has, uh, they've only played two games, haven't played for a month, so trying, trying to find the quarterbacks and give them the best chance to be successful. And there is Willis Newell running the football. Where to go for him after the five-yard walk-off for the delay of game. I believe that was Nick Fetters on the outside that uh, came up to make the tackle on that. And if you don't have a receiver out there that you are responsible for, it's a hard corner and you play the run very, very tough, and he, he does just that. Second down and 15 for Liberty back at the 42. Hughes looks to throw, and he will be sacked. Just nowhere for him to go and no time to get rid of the football. He was tackled by Baxter Bohr. And he'll get that sack and a five yard loss. It's third down and 20. And Jose Ramirez got to him at the same time. They just know how to push their way back with that strength of that defensive line. Play clock at 15. Seemed like it was taking a while to get the signals in, but plenty of time here for Liberty as the play clock's at nine at the snap. Hughes looks to throw, has a man, but the pass is way too high. Intended down there for who the intended receiver was. I think it's uh, 21, Jacob Adam, but it was incomplete. Yeah, it was just a, a seam pattern. Adam was lined up on the left wing, and right down the left seam he went, and that's the only way, place that uh, Hughes could put the ball because there was a, a defender underneath of uh, Adams and then uh, Fetters over top. So he tried to just uh, drop it in. Yeah, Fetters went high into the air to knock it away. Punting time for Iowa City Liberty. It'll come down at the 26-yard line. Trying to get to the middle of the field, but not much running room at all on that return. And for Prairie, that was Colton Forslund. And yeah, getting downfield, and getting good coverage, especially on a low line drive punt uh, that uh, that happened. A 36-yard punt, and Prairie starts first and ten at their own 28, with just 15 seconds to go here in the opening quarter at Iowa City Liberty. Going for the long ball, and he's got it in his man. Did he hang on? Flags fly. It was intended for Elijah Ward. He had his back to us. I couldn't tell for sure if he came up with the football or not. He got up with it, but that doesn't mean he caught it. We'll see what the call is. Probably going to do interference uh, on, on Iowa City Liberty, but uh, Eli did a nice job. He did exactly what he needed to do, is reach up there with his hands. His fingers were spread wide and got his hands on it. And I think, obviously, they did give him the catch as well. And that means that Prairie's going to decline it. Yep. Oh, 
Well, then, if that's the case, then if, if they're, not, if they're yeah. accepting the penalty, it comes from the line of scrimmage. Goes back to the line of scrimmage. I can't imagine them doing that. He, uh, he must, must not he have must caught, not have caught it. it. Yeah. Yes. So he, reach, he reaches up there. He gets his hands on it, and he's still bobbling it right there. Oh, oh yeah, there, there it, it is. is. Yep. Was well, a lot easier to see there than it was on the original play. Bob, <laughs> yes, how, how can that be? How can we miss that? <laughs> I don't know how we didn't see the ball rolling on the Astor turf. <laughs> that brown ball rolling on the green. I don't know. Well, the color blend uh, into the you know, green football field and the white jersey. Of We'd have a little better excuse if the ball was the size of a golf ball on the green out there. But anyway, <laughs> it is first and ten after the penalty. Now Prairie at their own 43. Ball on the turf momentarily. Pearson picks it up. Somehow breaks away from a tackle. Then a few more, and they'll have first down. And he picks up about 14 yards on the ground on that play from his own 43 to the 43 of Liberty. Yeah, it's an incredible run by Nick Pearson. He first drops the ball, and then he meets the defensive lineman, Colin Schultz. Watch this. It's a direct snap to him, drops it, picks it up. There's Schultz. He just drives away from, from Schultz. And he just follows the line play, offensive line play, Bob, because you know they don't know that it's a fumble. And there's another hope opening for him to run through. After one, it is 13-7 in favor of Prairie. We'll be back to see this Prairie drive continue when we return on MC22. We are ready for quarter number two at Iowa City Liberty. The Lightning down by six. Prairie with the football as the teams switch in. It's Prairie now will march from north to south on this field in rural North Liberty. Well, as we mentioned, uh, talking about uh, Nick Pearson uh, already at the end of the first period, uh, nine carries for 88 yards. That's just the first quarter alone. So obviously Liberty gonna have to do a much better job of trying to slow him down. And that's not an easy task. Prairie's Siande Adam gets picked up into the air by Griffin Kraft. And he'll get a couple of yards on that second down eight. And just a jet sweep from right to left. Now remember Jake Walters is the player that is out and Siande Adams is getting that time I just needs to run a little bit harder. I know you're looking for a place to run to, but you got to run you know, a little bit harder, a little faster to, to out uh, distance that, that defense. But he'll pick it up as he goes along. You know, he just doesn't have a lot of experience out there. Another low snap. But Pearson has lots of running room. A huge lane to run through, and he is inside the 20. That'll be first down at the 18 of Liberty. And that's the interesting thing about this offense is that that center has got a number one know who he's snapping the ball to because it's not always going to be to the same person. This one just happened to go to Deontay uh, Fliss who handed the ball off to Pearson, but sometimes it'll go directly to Pearson and the center just has to know which player he's going to snap it to. Well, in less than 13 minutes, Pearson is already over 100 yards in the game thanks to that big run. Not just... 10 carries. Yep, 10 carries. That, that was a 22-yard run down to the 19. Uh, so if my math is correct, Bob, he's up to uh, 110. Yep. I'll switch it up this time and give the ball to Longwell. Adam dives forward inside the 15 to the 11-yard line. Interesting that, again, they've got a number of players that they can uh, give the football to, but each of those players, no matter where they come from, and Longwell came from the right wing, he has to know. Prairie uh, guilty of an illegal block. Well, I was going to call it back, so I guess you know anything I, I say about that play, but what he does, he strung it out so nicely where he came from, but they have a number of players uh, who can play that wing, 
Uh, of course, we've seen uh, Pearson, in, you know, get the direct snap in the backfield. That's where he's always going to line up, and we'll see uh, Fetters. Nick Fetters will also run the football like that, and we've seen Siande Adams as well. So I know Coach Bliss really likes to balance up his running attack, although, you know, Nick Pearson, the focal point. That's the third big penalty that we've seen against Prairie in this game. That backs him up to the Liberty 21. First down, 13. So it was a rundown field of eight for Longwell, and then the penalty. Here comes Pearson again, spinning his way inside the 10 to the eight. Well, this must remind you a lot, Bob, of uh, Sigourney, your days in Sigourney. Yep. Actually, they started uh, running the single wing shortly after I graduated, but yeah, oh, to right? great success, absolutely. Well, you can see you know, all the misdirection play in the back row, but that offensive line is uh, doing a nice job of getting off the ball, getting their first initial block, because you can see how much space that Nick Pearson has every time he touches the football. Another 11-yard run to 121 yards. The QB will keep it this time, Brandon Velko. And second down, goal to go just outside the five-yard line. And they, you know, they're gaining, I think, the average seven or eight yards per carry. You know, a, a lot of that's due to the, to the big plays that they come up with, 30, 40-yard runs. Now they're going to go to an unbalanced line. Prairie last year led 4A with 334 yards rushing per game, and they've got another touchdown here on the touchdown run by Adam Longwell. Oh, that's interesting. You know, they had the unbalanced line to the left, Bob, and so the Iowa City Liberty defense had to shift down to, the, to their right side, and that made them weaker on, on the back side, and, and all Mark Bliss does is call an inside counter from left to right. So from the strength to the weak side and right over top of center. You can see Julian Fierro right there, number 74, pulling and leading the way through for Longfellow. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Adam uh, Longwell. And Bennett now will attempt his, I believe this will be his 20th PAT attempt of the year. No, his 19th, actually. And it is good. He still missed only three of them. It's 20 to 7 now in favor of Cedar Rapids Prairie with 9.23 to go in the second quarter. And this started at the end of the first quarter. This uh, possession did. You see that Nick Pearson made the, uh, 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 the twist fake to the left, direct snap back to uh, Brandon Vlecka, who handed off to Longwell coming from left to right. But again, it started back at the Prairie 28 yard line. Six plays, 72 yards. And they've had a, a 72 yard drive. I believe earlier they had an 80 yard drive. So Prairie is eating up a lot of real estate. Now we'll have to see if North Liberty, or excuse me, Iowa City Liberty can answer. Uh, this game could get away from in a hurry if Prairie would get the wall back and score again. Well, that's what uh, Iowa City Liberty uh, will need to do here. You know, put together a drive, take it downfield. You know, utilize the balance of run and pass. They haven't thrown the ball very much. And what did they? Uh, how many passes have they thrown coming into this game tonight, Bob? They have thrown just seven passes in the first two games of the year. Uh, they haven't played for a month, so you can imagine how rusty they would be yeah. if you want to use that the, the term in. in uh, football uh, uh, alliance because they haven't been out on the field they haven't been able to they haven't been able to practice but the good thing is by the end of this year and the Iowa Athletic Association did a nice job Bob of getting everybody in, you know as soon as the regular season ends no matter how many games you play and everybody was trying to get seven games in everybody gets in what would be considered the playoffs right Up kick that time fielded at the 22 yard line, and that's where it'll be first down and 10. It was Cole, Colin Schultz who grabbed that one. Yeah, Schultz uh, just called for a fair catch and caught it right where he's at. I guess didn't want to turn himself into a Gale Sayers type or, you know, Walter Payton or, you know, somebody that can run with the football. Been a long time since this Prairie defense has been on the field. And the last time they, they were on the field, uh, they only allowed three plays to be run. So they're doing a nice job, as I talked about. Slow, 
defensive possessions, short defensive possessions. There's a throw and a catch and a completion. That's the first completion of the year for Iowa City Liberty, and I believe it's good for first down. Excellent play, nice uh, pattern out there run by Griffin Kraft out of the right side, just ran a sideline pattern, the rollout by McKinney. You see uh, Newell out there blocking, keeping the defensive end from getting to him. That opened up McKinney's view of Kraft for the first down. Very nice throw on that first down by McKinney. See if they don't come back and do the same thing this time to the left though at the wide side of the field. At the 33, they'll hand off. And right up the middle goes 23. That will be uh, Des Willis Newell. Well, he does a nice job of hitting that hole, doesn't he, Bob? Yes, really he does. quick. He's quick. Got some explosiveness through that hole. You'll see he gets it on top, and all of a sudden just pow right through there. He saw the, the opening. And jumping on his back was Brandon Velko to get the tackle. Another attempt by Willis Newell. Well, just trying to eke out a first down here. I think you know, certainly all these coaches you know, want to try to establish the run, but you know, sometimes you've got to come to the realization that our offensive line isn't as big as that defensive line. That's a pretty good defensive line. So yes, now and then we can run the ball between the tackles, but by and large, you really got to mix it up you know, with counter plays, you know, jet sweeps from right to left, sweep action. You know, get away from that uh, that massive size in the middle. Well, and we saw that big run earlier, which was just that, a 32-yard run. And here we go with Liberty inside the 10 to the 5. And drug down from behind was Bo Miller. Grabbed at the last second by Nick Fetters. Otherwise, Liberty would have been on the board again. Well, you know, it's interesting that it could have been the defense to just let him go in to score, but no, they, they believe in their defense that they won't. Nice play action here, and McKinney just finds the uh, tight end running across uh, the, the, the line of scrimmage in Bo Miller. Curry didn't pick him up because he came from right to left, Bob, and no one saw him coming. They dropped into, you know, pass coverage defense, but it uh, allowed for the big play. He was wide open on that play. A 37-yard gain. And I, I want to continue on about the defense is that they, this, this might be the toughest four yards that I would say the Liberty is going to have to run here, try to uh, attain to get into the end zone. From the four, McKinney under center. Hands off. Willis Newell, nowhere to go for him. Might have lost a yard. Pulled down by Decker. Well, that's the thing about this defense uh, for Prairie. They've got some really good aggressive, uh, you know, that was a illegal procedure penalty. Not quite sure why it wasn't called. Uh, but they've got uh, good linebackers, good linebacking play. They move well. That defensive line is uh, designed to stuff those holes, occupy the offensive linemen, and let those linebackers sneak in there and, and make the tackles. Speaking of, Decker, who made that last tackle, you see the 5'10". 180 pounds senior, second and goal to go at the Prairie Four. And all kinds of movement that time. And the teams are pointing at one another. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did, he did, it was his, and he moved first. I think they're right, I think. Oh, it's gonna go against Liberty. Well, I saw two Liberty players move and then a Prairie player move two. But I think uh, the offense is uh, responsible for. And they're going to talk about it. you got to sit tight before that ball is snapped. Now, of course, if the defense jumps into the neutral zone, it's an automatic penalty. I think that's what the officials are discussing to find out exactly if uh, Prairie didn't jump into the neutral zone prior to the Liberty players moving. Nope, it's going to be on the Prairie defense. Exactly what happened. So they he encroached before the uh, Liberty players moved. Good job by the officials getting together and making sure they were all on the same page. Second and goal to go at the two. And off. Willis Newell fumble. McKinney crawling after it. Still can't get it. And I think Willis Newell actually finally ended up 
Ends up getting back on it just inside the 15. Yes, it is him. Little grease pig got drilled. And Bob, water up that football and let, let's try to get the uh, fumble recovery. Well, that's what happened there. There were three or four players that were getting after it. It's going to help Prairie a lot here. You see Newell. Oh, I see what happened. He, he wanted it, and it looked to me like McKinney was trying to take it away from him at the same time. That's unfortunate. Oh, Liberty very lucky to get that football back. Third down and long now. McKinney with a couple of successful pass attempts. He'll try again here. Throws right side, intercepted on the far sideline and knocked out of bounds after uh, picking it off is Jackson Decker. Well, he read that beautifully, didn't he, Bob? He yes, stepped he right, right in front of the receiver. Just as a simple out pattern. And McKinney kind of underthrew a little bit. And when you do that, you give that defender a, a great chance. You'll see McKinney roll into his right. The receiver on the right side, a little bit underthrown. If he throws it to the sideline, uh, about the most that Decker would be able to do is knock it away. But he stepped right in front of it, intercepts the pass. Well, and a little bit of a telegraph of that pass because there was really no other receiver over in that area. So Decker knew he was probably coming to the man he was on and was able to, as you said, step in front and get the INT. And that's something that Prairie has been able to do this year is take the football away. That is their sixth interception of the season. They also have eight takeaways on the ground. So very opportunistic defense as Pearson has nowhere to go on first down. Uh, that's a great defensive recovery for Iowa City Liberty. And that was Kraft making the hit on Nick Pearson. That's the second INT for Jackson Decker on the season. A loss of two. That's not very often that we say that when Pearson touches the football. Second and a dozen to go. But it happens, Bobby. I mean, it's not going to be perfect uh, every time. Obviously, the Liberty just needs more of those same type of plays. Fetters, he breaks into the clear, gets out of an ankle tackle, and he'll go up the left sideline. And he is taken down by Luke Myers, who didn't give up on the play. First down, Prairie over midfield. Inside counter play from right to left. 33-yard gain. Another big play for Cedar Rapids Prairie. And they get the right kind of blocking. They pull a right guard from right to left. And, and uh, they, they get some heavy blocking on that left side to begin with. And he does a nice job to cut the offensive lineman does a nice job to cut up soon as opposed to stringing it out, giving himself a chance, number one, to make a good block and, and give Fetters a chance to uh, find the opening. Penalty flags fly. I think, was it delay of game? I see the play clock's at 25. Nope, offsides against Liberty. Now see, what's part of the system for Cedar Rapids Prairie is they'll now and then go to the huddle and say, okay, um, on, uh, you know, on first sound, we're going to uh, adjust our, our formation. And so what they do is they pop up, half a dozen of them pop up like they're moving, and that's what draws off the uh, defensive line. I mean, what a way to make five yards, huh? Yeah, <laughs> look at this offensive set. You've got uh, big number 74, Julian uh -huh. Fierro, 6'3", 260, out wide to the right. We'll take a break as they take one on the field. We'll be back on MC22. Back here at Liberty High School. I love the lightning bolt that you can clearly see on the left side of your screen there in the middle of the field here at Iowa City Liberty on a great Friday night for football. The uh, next to the last regular season week. It's only a seven week regular season in 2020. It's like everything else, it's uh, very unique. And 
Pearson puts the ball on the ground again. Who will recover this time? Liberty is signaling they have the football. And they do. The officials make the signal. Picking up the football, Griffin Kraft coming out of that pile, and Liberty has their first takeaway of the game. Well, again, it's another low snap that Nick Pearson has to try to catch off the top of his shoes. You'll see it coming down. He just can't get the handle. Yeah. And then he can't get to the football because he runs into the back of the offensive lineman as he tries to pick up the football. That's unfortunate. Well, the ball's been on the ground quite a bit. Each team has turned it over once through the air and once on the ground. And it is first down 10 yards to go for Liberty at the 40-yard line. As you see Jeff Gordon behind the mask, the head coach for Liberty in his third season. Spent a few years at Cedar Rapids Prairie before he went to Iowa City Liberty. Yep, was the offensive line coach for the Hawks in both 2014 and 2015. And nowhere to go on the ground on first down for Liberty. I was watching the quarterback, and he ran untouched all the way downfield. I guess there's no, there's a, a reason why he wasn't touched, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I thought he had it. I was going, man, look at him go. Great fake. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me that gets fooled. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like McKinney. They got McKinney back there as a running back They got they, because both quarterbacks are on the field. Yep. Moses each made the tackle on that first down, second down, and a dozen. And McKinney will get the ball on the handoff from the other quarterback. And <laughs> it's a run for first down just over midfield to the 48. Well, Jeff Gordon, knowing a little bit about the Cedar Rapids Prairie offense, probably installed this just to you know, give them a taste of their own medicine. This is, you know, they've got the dual quarterback system back there. And snap to Hughes, who does the read option, gives it to McKinney, who runs uh, inside of Prairie territory. I got to say, I love the... Uh, Liberty jingle from the commercials you see on TV that we uh, hear being played over the uh, PA system. That's getting, great. I wonder if they're getting paid for that uh, very short promotion. Maybe one, we shouldn't say that out loud. 100 times during the game. <laughs> Somebody that's not getting paid probably uh, will be now. Uh, down to the 46-yard line, first down. Well, I think it's one of those things, Bob, about a three-yard run. They don't have to ask for permission because are they going to turn them down, right? <laughs> yeah, you that's true. I mean, you immediately know what it is. That's right. Nice run right up the middle, just a read option fake. He was doing a good job of seeing that opening in the middle. Ty Hughes got four on first down. He'll hand off to McKinney. No, yes, he will. <laughs> got fooled for a second, too. No gain on that one. Josue Ramirez, number 52 in the middle of your screen there, making, making the big hit. You know, when you run the option play like that, Bob, it's just, it's not going to be the same every single play. Yeah, and the quarterback has to be very savvy about how he goes about making making it work. Let's see if Liberty goes back to the air. I just roll out because you need six yards. And, you know, run a seven-yard play. Hughes there it is. throws, completes, short of the first down as he completes it to Bo Miller. And the whistle blows. I think maybe we have a timeout called. Yeah, Indeed, Prairie. Prairie. Yeah, yeah gonna, gonna force obviously Liberty to punt here, give them enough time, you know, with, with a minute, uh, a couple minutes to go in this first half. Give them enough time to move the ball downfield and get into scoring position. We'll see if uh, that's what happens, or will Liberty roll the dice here and go for it on fourth down? You know, if they would have made a better run fake, because Baxter Bohr was coming off that left defensive end, if they'd have sucked him in further, maybe that would have given McKinney a chance to get to the outside, because the, the, the slot back and the outside receiver were both running out patterns. It would have given McKinney a chance to find one for a first down. Now they're looking at a fourth down and four and they certainly are going to have to punt the football away. Yeah, you would think so. Already down by 13 points here. You don't want to give Prairie the football in this good a field position. We'll see what they do as both teams huddle up and the uh, seconds tick away before this fourth down play. Well, so. you know, the thing about Prairie is they can score from anywhere on the field. It's one of those offenses where, and, and they probably have a couple of plays, maybe half a dozen of them that we haven't even seen yet out of different formations, but similar to what they've been running that they'll use in situations like this. Look at Mark Bliss. Mark Bliss. He enjoys a game of football. You know all those football coaches do though, Bob. They, that's why they do it. They study the game, they coach the game. 
Try to get players to be enthused about the game. Play to win. And Liberty instead is actually going to go for it. Throwing, tipped into the air, and incomplete. So Prairie will take over at the 43 with just over two minutes to go. Charles Hodges was the intended receiver. Or excuse me, he's the one that knocked it away. Yeah, Hodges did a nice job of, of not buying the fake. That's a good setup there by Iowa City Liberty. Didn't really catch Prairie off guard. I guess they didn't really have anybody back to accept a punt. And Hughes just delivered, and Charlie did a nice job getting his hands up there. Griffin Kraft, the intended receiver, but a lot of defensive traffic in the area. Prairie throws on first down. Catch, big hit, and completion at the 31-yard line. A terrific grab by number 19, Colton Forsland, and a big hit, as I said, as well. First down for Prairie after a 26-yard completion. Well, Prairie going after the juggler right here, especially at the end of this first half. There's a lot of time really to go. Prairie still has a couple of timeouts left. Throwing and short and incomplete. See, if Deontay gets a little bit skittish back there, he just decides to, to, to get out of that pocket a little bit too soon. If he looks to his left side, he's got Eli Ward wide open on that on the left side. He's got to be able to see downfield at a pre-snap read. You can almost know where you're going to be throwing the football. Looks like it was intended for Velko. Fliss. Quick throw to Ward on the right side. Ward inside the 25, and he is drugged down by a pair of Liberty tacklers at the 18-yard line. Nice play. Good, quick pass out to uh, Eli Ward out on the right side. Got a nice snap. You just got to turn and fire it. And now Eli's just sizing up where he can go. He got a couple nice blocks. Picked up some good yardage. Griffin, Griffin Kraft and Bo Miller on the stop for Liberty. First and 10 for Prairie. Fliss throws to the end zone, well over the head of the intended receiver, Brandon Velko. Well, you know, I'd be upset with myself that time, and I'd come back and run the same play. No it, it was there. Yeah, I mean, come back and run the same play. I don't think that their defense is going to do anything differently, and even though it is second down and 10, I think it was set up nicely. There's a couple of receivers out on, there on that left side, so you, can, you have your pick. Let's see what Prairie elects to do here. I mean, they've got a trips formation out there. Fliss instead this time will throw it short and it's incomplete. Once again, intended for Velko. This time they were trying to do just a simple, uh, that old slip screen, you know, with the uh, with Velko coming in from the slot back. He just does a slant pattern. You see the second receiver, you see the bottom of his feet right there. He's just a little slant pass right off of his hands, probably running before he actually hauled it in. Trying to dump it right in front of the linebackers. Incomplete third and 10 at the 18. Fliss steps up, he'll keep it up over the 15. Dives in between a couple of tacklers to get himself the first down and first and goal at the four. So Prairie will make some switches now after that 14 yard run by Fliss. First and goal, they mark him actually at the three yard line. He's very athletic. And once he gets out of the open field, and he's a big strong kid too, he's hard to bring down. A little bit of high step in there. <laughs> he was doing some of that. And here comes Pearson straight up the gut and straight into the end zone for another Prairie touchdown. With 57 seconds left to go. Remember this possession started back on the 43 yard line after Iowa City Liberty was unable to complete, you know, a fake punt or they just ran an offensive play on fourth down. Pearson, who had a 33-yard run, a two-yard run, and now a three-yard touchdown run. A.J. Walter will not attempt the, well, yeah, this, yeah, is, they just, are, this is just pole cap. They are going to, uh, they are going to kick it. Walter, two of two in this game so far. 
And A.J. has his 17th made PAT of the year, and that extends the lead to 27-7 in favor of Cedar Rapids Prairie. Well, another almost perfect possession. Seven plays, Bob, and 57 yards. And it all ended with this direct snap to Nick Pearson, who did not drop this one. And he drove, got the ball over the line of scrimmage. And never did go down. <laughs> he's a tough kid to bring down. You know, he's a wrestler, too. So, and those guys sometimes have the toughest or the strongest people. Yeah. yeah they're so used to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Yep. Got to be, uh, like, you know, to use a wrestling term, strong on your feet. And he's certainly that. So Liberty now will get the football back with under a minute to go. And a team that doesn't throw the football a lot will see how they decide to handle it. it. May depend on how this kickoff return goes. As back deep to get it is Des Wilson Newell. Well, unofficially, Nick Pearson at 15 carries and 145 yards in the three scores. So it's kind of a yeoman's day for him. Pretty good first half, I'd say. You bet. Walter's kick will come down at the four yard line. Coming to the near side with the football is Bo Miller. He's taken down at the 22. And the Prairie defenders there to bring him down, Colton Forsland and also Jaden Nezelstein. Well, being down 27 to seven, I don't think that Iowa City Liberty is gonna be uh, trying anything exotic here. They just want to get out of this first half, get regrouped at halftime, and put together a game plan for the second half that can get them back in this game. And of course, Liberty will get the football to start the second half. Kenny hands off. Nowhere to go on first down. Jeremy Irons there to make the stop for Prairie on the run by Wilson, Willis Newell. Watch him, the Jersey Irons will come right down from the top of your screen. Gets right on to Des Newell. Kind of was able to bring him down with one arm, really, as he was flying in there. And that is going to be our next to the last play of the first half, it looks like, as the play clock rolls down to 11 seconds and the game clock at 14. McKinney. Hands off again to Willis Newell. Not much running room again. He'll get back to just past the original line of scrimmage, and that will be the end of half number one. Prairie with a commanding 27-7 lead over the Iowa City Liberty Lightning. We'll be back for halftime highlights and stats coming up on MC22. The fans bundled up on a Friday night in North Liberty with Cedar Rapids Prairie up by 20 over Iowa City Liberty at halftime. Jerry, let's take a look at those halftime highlights. And a perfect Friday night for football, with the weather the way it is. Here's Nick Pearson going to get things started for Cedar Rapids Prairie on their first possession, finishing off an eight-play 90-yard drive with 23-yard touchdown pass. But, oh, no, on Prairie's next possession, it's a muffed punt that Sam Brockshee tried to turn into a running back and gets tackled by... Des Newell, and on the ensuing drive for Iowa City Liberty, it's a 32-yard touchdown run in two plays for Iowa City Liberty, and that's Michael Miller, the senior, showing his speed. And, but the Prairie Hawks would come back. Another score by Nick Pearson of three yards. Here's a tackle for a sack by uh, Josue Ramirez and Baxter Bohr that led to that 15-yard touchdown run by Adam Longwell. And then all of a sudden, an interception by 
Jackson Decker stepping in front of the intended receiver, and Cedar Rapids Prairie would turn it over uncharacteristically, putting it on the turf was Nick Pearson, but never to fear, Pearson would come back, redeem himself, and score on the three-yard touchdown run that helped get Cedar Rapids Prairie out to that 27-7 lead. And our halftime stats show a big running game, obviously from Cedar Rapids Prairie with Pearson running for those 145, but 242 yards total on the ground, 294 in total, but uh, four penalties, which cost them on a couple of drives, 11 first downs to two. Liberty with a, a couple of big plays able to get on the scoreboard and it's 27-7 at the break. We'll be back to kick off half number two with Liberty getting the football when we return on MC22. Back at Liberty, you see the masks on the fans. Of course, a requirement at this high school football game. And as are uh, blankets tonight. Yeah, <laughs> a couple boy, of Star Wars fans there right next to one another. Yeah, we got to stay warm. We got to wear layers tonight. Yeah, and then of course, I think the mask is helping them you know, keep their lips and nose and yeah. lower part of their face uh, warm too. Well, but this is a beautiful facility that they really they've built here. It's been, they've opened it now for three years now because it wasn't built originally when the high school was built because they didn't have the football team. And, and you know, so they've taken their time, really done a nice job. Uh, Scott uh, uh, Scott Kibbe, the uh, principal here at the high school, is, you know, he's very enthusiastic about education and the kids and athletics and everything that goes with, you know, a kid's upbringing. And, uh, you know, he was doing everything the right way. You know, with the staff that they have, you know, faculty and, and the athletic uh, programs. We weren't going to rush into things. No, if, uh, you mentioned it's not just a beautiful football field here, but obviously a beautiful school and uh, some other sporting facilities right next door, some tennis courts, and I know the baseball field's right there too. And uh, plenty of space. They, they put it in a good spot to be able to grow because yeah. the school's growing. I know they've already uh, done uh, one addition here. North Liberty is growing as well. It, it's, its population has just exploded. Kickoff to start the second half. will come down at the eight yard line, up over the 20, 25, and out of bounds right there is Bo Miller. Well, it's important for obviously the Liberty to establish themselves right now, get that running game going, put, mix in a few passes, and look sharp. They have to execute. You know, they're, they're out. out sized uh, by that uh, large defensive line and, and the quickness of those linebackers for Cedar Rapids Prairie, but you can still have some success. At the 25, first down and 10, you see McKinney back in there at the quarter spot. Willis Newell, quarterback spot, excuse me, Willis Newell right next to him in the offensive backfield. And McKinney will keep it. He has a nice little seam to run through, and he has a first down over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice read option play that he just kept the football to himself. Does a nice job to you know, fake into Newell. Offensive line, throwing some decent blocks. Caden Striggle makes the stop for Cedar Rapids Prairie. Game of 11, biggest play for them of the night. Well, second biggest after the touchdown. Run. Right. And off Willis Newell. Looked like he lost the handle for a split second, but able to hang on to it. And he has another first down at the 47-yard line. More good blocking up front by Liberty. Absolutely. They uh, maybe just adjusted a little bit of what they're doing against this defensive line, or they're just coming out and deciding they want to play the game of football. Tackle made by Caden Striegel again. So, sometimes it's just an attitude adjustment. And there goes Willis Newell. He's wrapped up by a couple of Prairie defenders for only a one-yard gain on that first down carry. And a good convergence by those white jerseys on the defensive end. Uh, McGuire Jones for one getting in there, but they're getting two and three players yeah. in on the, on the tackles. Clayton Scott was also there on that stop. 
but it's important for Iowa State Liberty to have some quick success. They need they need four scores, three for sure, at least to get the game tied if they can get to that point. Kenny will keep. He runs into a brick wall of four Prairie defenders that throw him back. So they're collapsing down on those tackles and those guards and just not being able to be pushed out. And so if you can't block those guys out, you'll see on the left side, see how the white jerseys just stuff up those gaps. Baxter Bohr there. He was the first man in there. Josue Ramirez, number 52, getting into there. And I think Clayton Scott was in on that stop again as well. You can look at Baxter Bohr there. Third down and nine for Liberty. Kenny's shoulder pad needs a little of adjustment. The clock can have to be stopped by the officials. <laughs> Strange that uh, they, the play clock had almost completely run out before McKinney even realized he needed a little equipment adjustment. One of those uh, fantasy adjustments, uh, equipment adjustment, huh? Third down at the 48-yard line. McKinney will throw. He's got a man down there, and it is instead intercepted just over the head of the intended receiver and picked off by, by Sionde Adams. He was trying to get it to Griffin Kraft, I believe, was the intended receiver. This is great coverage, Bob. He's in front of the receiver towards the goal line, and he goes up and just takes it away from him. Yeah. That's great concentration, great interception by Sionde. Just a little bit over the hands of Kraft and a nice defensive play. And Another interception for Cedar Rapids Prairie. That is, I'm trying to remember, is that their second interception of the game, the which night, gives yes. them seven on the season and eight fumbles. So. Eight, I think it's eight on the season because it is their second. And it's six second. coming in. And here comes Pearson. Well, he does not need much room, and look at him go, but a flag flies behind him as he is brought down at the 45. He's going to get credited with some yards gained here, but we'll see what the penalty is going to be. And holding, according to the preliminary indication. No, face mask oh. on the defense. Wow. Well, well I, we we were watching, both watching the official, and he. Yeah. Gave, I thought he gave the holding. Uh, I thought so too. Indicator. I guess he wasn't holding the other hand up there, <laughs> but from a distance, obviously. The hand going down is the same signal, but you've always uh, got the other hand on there. There it oh, is. There you is can right see there. it very clearly. Yeah. Great camera work by the MC22 crew, as always. Now for Nick, that puts him at 16 and 166 yards. And the ball sits on midfield. Pearson gets the direct snap, almost took that direct snap away from Brandon Belko, it looked like. Not much running room for him on that first down yeah, carry. Great defensive play by Anthony Peoples coming in from behind. Sometimes, you, get, you know, it's going to happen. You're not going to get 10 yards on every single carry. Second down at midfield. Prairie, as you might expect, not in a big hurry with a 20-point lead here. Just a few minutes into quarter number three. run into each other that time and Velko able to jump onto the football for a three yard loss. I'm not sure if he was meaning to hand it off to Longwell who was coming from right to left or if it was going to be one of those uh, read option fakes with the uh, the wing back there. Yeah, he was going to fake it because because uh, Vleko was going to follow Nick Pearson on the right side. You know, just some pretty uh, good, some miscues that uh, the coaching staff is looking for to improve on, you know, week to week. They're getting close to the playoffs, you, uh, Bob, and you yeah. want to be playing your best football come after next weekend. Just a couple of weeks away, and Prairie is going to take time out as that play clock got down to two seconds with third and 13 just ahead. As they discuss things there, we'll take a break. We'll be back for this third down play on MC22.
back as we are almost ready for this third down and 13 play for Cedar Rapids Prairie. They need to get down to the 40-yard line of Liberty. But they do it on the ground. Well, you got Deontay Fliss in there, quarterback now. Yep, Fliss rolls to the near side, has a man wide open, and it is completed, and a good tackle. I believe it's gonna bring down Alex White just shy of the first down. He'll be marked at the 41. It'll be fourth and about a half yard to go. You know, with that, you gotta know where that first down marker is. How far do I have to go? Deontay does a nice job to look him off, and then he rolls out to his left to find White. And he has all kinds of running room. He just has to know what yard line he has to get to. Good job grabbing the jersey to bring him down, and it is fourth and a half yard. Prairie to go for it. And you see how they're tightening down their splits. Look for Pearson, the direct snap, and the bull rush. Flags, not flags, but uh, illegal procedure. Yes, there is a flag. You can actually see it, but clearly there is, and it will mark it off five yards against Prairie. Yes, the fish on the near sideline, like the offensive line just got off a little bit too soon, but. You know, again, that was a fumbled snap. Yeah. And, and Nick Pearson would have been stopped short because the black jerseys were in there. There's been a number of those today for Prairie. Yeah, those coaches, they like looking, you know, for indicators like that of where we need to, to improve. And, you know, it's discipline. And Fliss throws, has a man. Great catch. The defense was right there, but Elijah Ward able to take it away from Jacob Adam. He's some kind of an athlete, Eli is. Just runs a simple post pattern far enough for the first down. Deontay with plenty of time. You know, he's got some good soft hands, able to haul in that uh, reception for the first down. Adam, the 5'8 junior, couldn't get it away from the 6'1 junior for Prairie, and it is first and 10. Fliss looks to throw again. He'll stop. He'll fire down the field into double coverage, incomplete over the head of Ward. And the thing about it, it was a little bit late. Uh, you know, Deontay, Eli was running past the defensive backs at about the five to se uh, seven yard line, and that's when it needs to be thrown. You can't wait for him to get into the end zone and then decide to throw a 40 yard pass. You're asking for trouble. That's just, just things that Deontay Fliss is going to have to learn, you know, over the course of time. You got to, you got to. When you've got to be able to judge my receivers running by the defensive backs. They're not in front of him or running with him. Put it out there and, and let him run underneath it. Fliss, the junior, back there again for a second down and long. And he's going to throw again. Comes to the near side, and he's got his man this time for a prairie touchdown. That's Brandon Vlacko taking it into the end zone. <laughs> runs a nice pattern on the left side and runs right by the cornerback. Doesn't get any. Uh, support from the free safety, and he's wide open at the 10-yard line. Deontay with a nice, nice delivery from the back of the pocket. Look at the time he has to throw, and he doesn't hold the ball much, and you see Vlecko just running right by the cornerback and wide open. A 32-yard connection from Fliss to Velko, and that extends the Prairie lead to 26 points. The extra point attempt coming by Walter. Well, you know, that, that's one of the things, you know, that make great football teams is you can run the football very nicely because you always have to have a running game, especially this time of year in the state of Iowa. But if you can add in there a nice passing game, get your, your uh, skills people all involved, it, it can take you deep into the playoffs. Well, that was a bad snap, but a wonderful job by Vlecko to be able to upright the ball as you see him talking to the center about it. And that allowed the PAT to go up and through for Bennett, or excuse me, for Walter. And that makes it 34-7 in favor of Cedar Rapids Prairie. And you see the play again, this from ground level, great camera work by MC22's production people. And Aaron Vleckel knew what to do with that route. You know, I'm sure he would rather be playing quarterback to throw those, but as a receiver, he's just as effective. Echo, another junior. It's going to be a lot of talent returning for this Prairie team in 2021. And you were telling me before we uh, got started tonight, the younger kids in this high school have had a lot of success on the field. So good things to come in future years, too, for yeah, Prairie. Yeah, the sophomore team has 
been unbeaten all year. They won't get beat, beat by anybody this year. They were unbeaten as freshmen. And the four teams that they had as seventh and eighth graders, they have black and orange. They divided into two teams because they've got so many kids out. Neither of those, none of those teams lost. So they haven't lost a game. Uh, one of the kids who commented to me that they, they haven't, we haven't lost since uh, Metro League football. Wow. So, yeah, and, 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 you know, the junior class is really good. The sophomore class, we just talked about the freshmen, they're unbeaten too. So the next few years, and, you know, you got to really credit the coaching staff, Mark Bliss and that coaching staff, for developing the, those, the lower levels. Yeah, well, I tell you what, success breeds success, and that's definitely what's been happening to Prairie. You uh, go to their games, and every season you can just see the number of kids they have out for football at the varsity level too. Certainly uh, a lot of schools wish that they had that many kids on their sideline, but when you're having the success that Mark Bliss and his uh, team has been having year after year, that's got a lot to do with it. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, they're not, not, they don't fear the uh, the concussion problem. Uh, you know, there's a chance that you're going to get injured, but if you give 100%, if you're prepared, you're in good physical uh, condition, chances are you're gonna be successful playing this game. And that's why there are so many people standing on that sideline in those white jerseys. Walter to kick it away for Prairie. It'll come down at the nine yard line. Ball's on the ground again, picked up. And getting away momentarily was Bo Miller. He's finally taken down just outside the 15. Sometimes those plays that are broken up like they are can cause problems. You know, it, it sometimes will tend to have the defensive people let up a little bit and he's able to slide right through that first wave and then McGuire Jones right there being able to stop him in his tracks. Liberty starts in bad field position back at their own 10 yard line. Again, they just need to get some consistency in that offense, move the football downfield. And throwing on first down and completing Kraft. Hitting his receiver. That's Brody Fishman who made the catch, the senior. And he has a nice completion and a first down on that uh, connection. Yeah, just, just took the short passing route because they don't have enough time to wait for receivers to run long routes. And he hits uh, his receiver, Brody Fishman, on a seven yard pass that uh, turns into an 18 yard game. Both Hughes and McKinney have had completed passes tonight, showing some weaponry through the air, and Hughes will keep it himself. And the ball ends up on the ground, but once again, like earlier in the contest when that happened, in this instance, the play was blown dead. Credited with a one yard gain. You see head coach Jeff Gordon and some of the other coaches on the Liberty side of the field. As that clock continues to run over the five and a half minute mark of quarter number three. Wanting to throw is McKinney after the handoff. And he is in trouble. Just uh, chased all over that backfield by the Prairie defense and finally taken down by Jackson Decker. Well, they did a nice job to get after him, didn't they? You have Jackson Decker, you got Josue Ramirez uh, in there as well. It was just a, a halfback option pass, but uh, making uh, the good uh, uh, intention to bring him down was Isaiah Harrison. Otherwise, he, you know, he'll uh, set up and throw a pass downfield, and Harrison did not allow that. Well, and how about Harrison, too? He didn't get him initially, but chased him all over the field and ended up helping out on the tackle. A big loss of eight, third down 18, and now a penalty flag. It is an offside against Prairie. Well, you know, for a few things that are, uh, that Prairie have, uh, the, the miscues that they've been making tonight are very correctable. It hasn't affected their offenses. As you can see, they're up 34 to seven. Hughes 
Hughes wants to throw, gets blasted, and the ball is on the ground. I believe Prairie recovered. Big hit by Baxter Bohr. And it is Prairie first down at the 20. Yeah, that was a crushing hit. You can see Baxter coming from that left side. Slipped away from his, uh, you can see on the right side of your screen, he gets around the offensive tackle, and just as Hughes was about to deliver it, Baxter with the big hit. I thought they had signaled that it was Prairie ball, but it's not. It was recovered by Liberty right there. You can see that on the sideline, and so it is fourth down and 27 after another loss, that one of nine, after the ball was knocked away from the quarterback, and Liberty will kick it away. Good punt. Comes down at the 42, another little trouble with the handle, but getting it across midfield on the short return is number 19, Forsland. 37 yard kick. And with that 34 to seven lead, here comes Cedar Rapids Prairie's offense and they got just a little bit less than half of the field to go. So they've been able to play the field position game nicely. Good defense and of course that offense is rocking. It's interesting, this trip for Cedar Rapids Prairie is probably about as close as a uh, trip to Kingston Stadium in Cedar Rapids if they were to make that. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little bit Not to the too south far here. at all away from uh, Cedar Rapids Prairie High School on Cedar Rapids South Side. 17 carries, 171 yards for the senior Nick Pearson. Another big night for him as he's adding on to what has been a very good career in the backfield for Prairie. To throw and over the head of the intended receiver as Vleko stopped. It appeared he was gonna run the football and then decided uh, to try and fake out the defense, but just overshot the intended receiver on that play. Well, you know, they've been requiring Iowa State Liberty to, to honor the running game so much that they just wanted to see if they, uh, if those defensive backs were thinking at all about a pass, and so they run a play action, a run action, to hold the linebackers and, and defensive linemen and see if the receivers can run past the cornerbacks, and Leco just happens to overthrow him. Fetters was the intended receiver on that second down. Third down, five yards to go. It's an unbalanced line, they go to the left now. And then they run it back to the right. And Fetters has a first down before he gets touched, and he is down to the 30-yard line. Such an effective play, Bob. They take that, they, but the whole strength of that offense is on the left side, and the weak side on the right side, they run back to the weak side and become successful. Watch this, here it all comes. Four people leading Fetters. This team has definitely got some weapons on offense, and Fetters is one of them. Well, that's what it takes. You've got to have a lot of players that you can use, but they've got to understand how to, how to run this offense. They've got to understand where to line up, you know, what to do on, on each play, how to make their fakes. Leco to throw again. He's got Fetters over here, but he ends up throwing to the tight end for the completion. That one goes to number 83, Braden Dwerkson, the 6'3", 210-pound sophomore. Had to move him up from the sophomore level this week due to injury to some of the players. Vleko had a man running deep. You know, those are the, you, you run plays like that, you got a guy that's open deep. You know, you want to score. I, I always wanted to score when I was a quarterback. Sometimes you don't get many opportunities. Here comes Pearson up the middle. He is taken down at the seven. It'll be second down. He's on his way to 200 yards in this game. 21 yards away, he is. 18 carries, does a nice job, has the direct snap right to him. And you see how he flexes, he'll turn as if he's gonna hand, it, hand the ball off to uh, the, uh, the wing back who's coming behind him. And that throws off those linebackers. They're looking for that football. An 
another flag flies. Defensive penalty on Liberty. And I believe with the half the a distance. Repeat of second down. Well, I think it's going to be a first down, Bob. Half the distance to the goal. Oh, yep. You are right. It'll mark it down at the four yard line. And Liberty will take a timeout as well here in quarter number three. Trying desperately to keep Cedar Rapids Prairie out of the end zone. Both teams now with two timeouts remaining in the game as Prairie tries to distance themselves even further, already up by 24, and then or 27, fish, excuse and me. And the efficient offense that they have, Bob, it's, it's just really kind of, it's very fun to watch. And being able to add in the passing game this year, mostly this year, I mean, they've thrown the ball in the pass a little bit, but you know, with all of the skills people they have on the outside, uh, and of course, two of them are injured uh, that aren't playing tonight, uh, Gabe Burkle and uh, Jake Walters. They're both very capable receivers too, so they had to elevate some kids. Uh, one from the sophomore level who just caught that pass here moments ago, and some other kids that uh, were getting some minimal playing time. But they've thrown in a passing game that's gonna make them really very dangerous when uh, they get into playoff time. See one of the uh, big guys up front. They've got a uh, nice big offensive line, which when you run this kind of offense, you've got to. Got to create seams for the runners. And Vlecko with a whole host of people in the backfield with him now. We'll have just Pearson alongside of him. And Pearson gets the direct snap, and he will get down to the one. He's drugged down just outside the goal line by Griffin Kraft. Yeah, boy, that was a nice tackle by Kraft to step right in there. Shoulder pad to shoulder pad. Inside of a minute in quarter number three as Prairie knocks on the end zone door again. Yeah, you see Pearson following Vlecko as close as he did, but boy, Kraft did a nice job to slice knife right through there and, and get to Pearson's waist. And he's not an easy guy to bring down by himself. By yourself, I should say, with just one person and he is into the end zone this time as the official on the far side signals touchdown for Prairie. Well, you see that white jerseyed wall again, and Nick did take a pretty good lick right at the line of scrimmage, but by that time he was already into the end zone. Pearson's fourth touchdown of the night, this time from a yard out. He's scored now from 33, from two, from three, and from one. The PAT attempt by Walter is up, and it is through. And Cedar Rapids Prairie with a commanding 41-7 lead now here at Iowa City Liberty, late in quarter number three. Well, and for Nick, Officially, I've got him for 20 carries, 183 yards in those four scores, Bob. You know, they just they just keep chipping away at it. Uh, you know, it's, it's the old uh, adage of uh, you know breaking the rock. You know, you, you know way to get it is just to keep pounding away at it, and you're going to eventually get it get it to break. And you know, Prairie knows it's a four quarter game. They're just going to run as many plays as they can. They, uh, if at the end of it they cross the goal line to score, uh, that's the whole objective to get there, but they know that they're going to wear down a defense by running eight, nine, ten plays as much as they can. Well, by this time in the game, when you see uh, Pearson coming at you, <laughs> I mean, you've taken a lot of hits and had to give a lot of hits by this point in the game, and that uh, North Liberty defense, or the uh, Iowa City Liberty defense, excuse me, no doubt uh, starting to tire a little bit. It's been sure. a long time they've been on the field. Yes, they have. You can look at Nick Pearson right there. Going to be a nice college football player if he elects to go that route. You know, and he only played last year as a junior uh, because Keegan Simmons was uh, in front of him two years ago as a, as a senior, and Keegan was a three-year player. So, you know, it, it's kind of been running back you at Cedar yeah. Rapids Prairie High That's School. Right. And although, you know, I was looking at uh, the stats today before uh, we came out here today that the leading rusher in the state is a young man by the name of Wyatt Hunter from Grinnell. Grinnell hosting Cedar Rapids Xavier tonight. Yeah, and so battle we'll see, of top ten teams there. That's right, and you know, see what kind of running attack Hunter can uh, come up with tonight against Xavier. A short kick fielded 
by the up man. That's Owen Schwarzendruber. And he is brought down at the 41-yard line, so good field position for Iowa City Liberty here in the closing seconds of quarter number three. You know, for as much as we laud the offense of Cedar Rapids Prairie, you certainly got to uh, give credit to that defense for uh, keeping short possessions for Iowa City Liberty, just not giving up any plays whatsoever. And they are out there again to see if they can get another stop. McKinney will keep, and he's able to pick up about three to the 45-yard line on what will likely be the final play of the third quarter. Good Sam Topka, good to see number four out there for Cedar Rapids Prairie. Kid really busts his tail all week long, every week. Back for position. Comes up with a big tackle. And Prairie has a big lead as we prepare for the final 12 minutes. We'll be back to North Liberty on MC22. There you see the beautiful moon on a Friday night. I feel a little bit of a tug. I think I see a couple of men there. Walking on the moon, huh? Yeah. That's a great shot. Yes, it is. Beautiful. Perfect October moon. You know, it's, it's, we run into this every, every year, you know. Yeah. We had wind and rain and cold earlier this week. Here's the calm after the storm, and now we'll get our uh, get our Indian summer, they call it, yes. coming ahead the next couple weeks. Next week looks like it's going to be beautiful, and maybe for the most part, the month of October above, above normal temperature-wise. I'm okay with that. McKinney to throw, and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, trying to get it to Dagwin Sanders, and it brings up fourth down. Just plays it that you need to be completed. Third down, excuse me, third and seven. You know, and Daquan knew he was open, Pass may have been thrown a little bit behind you, but when you get, a, you get your hands on it, you know, and for as much as they've been struggling here tonight, you know, you got to try to get something positive out of it. Make a play to help your team keep that football and keep moving. McKinney with a shovel pass forward. He completes it to Gage Gingerich. Wow, that's a nice play by McKinney. He knew he couldn't square to throw it normally, so he just pitches it forward, which is the same thing as a forward pass. And gets a first down out of it. Got nine yards and first down. McKinney getting away from the two linebackers. Gingerich, of course, tripping over a blade of grass. <laughs> At the 46, here comes Willis Newell pushing his way for about a three-yard gain. And I see that Mark Bliss has started to put in, uh, I think he's replaced all of the first teamers with his second unit, giving them a chance. They need to get some game time experience in. You know, so they'll see what uh, this defense can do to keep Iowa State Liberty from uh, getting into the end zone. And the coach looking pretty relaxed on the Prairie sideline. You know, just happy for the moment. You know, they'll get back at it come tomorrow as they prepare for Cedar Rapids, Washington next week. McKinney sidestepping tacklers, but more keep coming. He finally is dropped at the 42. One of those situations where he ran a lot but didn't get anywhere. Charles Hodges brings him down. Yeah, he picks up a lot of yardage and only moves the chains one, or you moves the down marker one. But Prairie are doing a nice job, and even in the second unit, they're pursuing, they're gang tackling, all the things that uh, coaches preach to them that uh, will help them be successful. Hey, 
Willis Newell will get the first down to the 40 or 35. Liberty's had some really nice offensive runs tonight, some good passes. They have, but they just haven't come consistently, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they've found ways to break down on possessions that they might have run five or six plays, four or five plays anyway, because they haven't had any possessions beyond uh, six plays. Those are the things that you grow with, that you, that you just learn how to uh, make a part of your whole offensive system. Down to 35. Ball ends up on the ground, and McKinney with another shovel pass. Not as successful that time, but once again, great pursuit in the offensive backfield by Prairie. He was just getting rid of this football, Bobby. He didn't want to have anything to do with it, so he bobbles it, and he just picks it up, and he just pitches it forward just because he can. The hot potato went to Brody Fishman. <laughs> Another low snap. I'm not sure actually if the snap was low or if he just kind of dropped it, but uh, picks up a couple on that one. Looks like he was knee high anyway. And you know, some, you got to get that ball up to his waist to, and yeah. above that because he's he's looking downfield. He doesn't have the you know the time to have to look down low pick up the football. You take your eyes off any of that defensive coverage or what your receivers are doing. And he's getting another shoulder pad adjustment by one of his offensive linemen. Max Beckman helps him out. He still picks up four yards. Third down and six. And McKinney will roll to the near side. Defense pursues from the backside, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, and intercepted by R.J. Wade. R.J. doing a nice job. In the right place at the right time. Prairie has another takeaway. You know, and Bob, they had those receivers covered nicely. There was uh, somebody running a post or a flag route. He was being covered. RJ was coming across the, uh, the, the football field. Out of the hands, there's RJ right there. You see how many white jerseys to round the two black jerseys for Iowa City Liberty. Junior Mason Culler, the intended receiver. Again, the defense comes up with a big stop to keep Iowa City Liberty with progressing further into their own territory. And you would expect to see a lot of the ground game now for Prairie. Hand off. First ball carry, carry of the ball game for Braden Kolasik. Yeah, we're not gonna see Nick Pearson anymore, so Nick's night's done at 20 carries, 183 yards, four scores. Pretty good night, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, he did a nice job, he helped this uh, this team along. You know, credit also to the uh, coaching staff setting up a nice game plan, balanced uh, attack that they had going, execution by the offense. They did make a lot of mistakes. That'll be what the uh, coaching staff will be harping on this week. Another handoff and getting into the clear is Trey Peterson, another sophomore, playing on the varsity squad tonight with a big run. And look at the celebration by his teammates over on the Prairie sideline. Yeah, no question about it. It's got to be exciting hit for you know, a young man like him. Coming from that wing back spot, following that offensive line, those, those running backs that are blocking for him. Twenty-eight yard pickup, Bob. Pretty exciting for that young man and for his teammates too. You love to see that reaction on the sideline anytime that happens. Well, you know the thing is, they're going to pull him up to the varsity level. They yep. got to get some game time play because exactly. you never know if he's, you know, going to actually be needed at some point. And he's back out there again, with second down and six yards to go. Checking the play chart on his wrist. Charles Hodges keeps and has first down and is run out of bounds into the Prairie sideline. You can just see all the bodies that, that are leading him uh, through there. Moses Each was lined up right behind the tackle on the right side. 42, watch him go. And then he's got to the running back uh, in front of him uh, as well. That is a Braxton Martin. You know, with all that mass of humanity in front of you like that. He just pushing the black jerseys back. You know, it gives Charles Hodges really a chance to pick his, his, uh, his paths to pick up some good yardage. 
Barry at the Liberty 33. Braxton Martin carried it that time for Prairie as they are really spreading around the football on this drive. Uh, this is ball control now. They're just time consuming time. Just continuing to pick up yardage, run two or three plays, move the chains, run two or three more plays, move the chains. You know, Bob, this is great, great uh, uh, management, clock management, good execution. It's another opportunity for the sophomore Peterson. As he is down to the 26 yard line. It'll be third down and short for Prairie. Really a third and four, I guess. Wouldn't call that short. Maybe third and three officially. And that would be the same thing as saying that third and nine isn't very long for a team like Cedar Rapids <laughs> Prairie for what they could do with the football on the ground. As you see, Peterson just, no, nobody's back there to tackle him, and he's just, you know, yeah, he's trying got to decide a wall which four, way to go. Yeah, yep. four players in front of him. Nice run up the middle for first down yardage for Hodges to the 20 yard line. See Hodges getting the direct snap. They've been having problems with the snaps. You know, the last time they had a game where they had problems with the snap, direct snap, was when they were Dubuque senior. I remember talking to Mark Bliss about that. They lost that game 17 to 14, 23 bad snaps wow. in that game. Well, that'll stymie any kind of consistency you get offensively. Peterson tried that sweep to the left again. A host of North Liberty, or I keep saying North Liberty, Iowa City Liberty tacklers get him at the uh, 16. Well, I won't say much, Bob, about that because we are in North Liberty. Yeah, it takes a little getting used to. It does. Although, you know, I guess it could be Iowa City uh, uh, address out here. Yeah, for more, could be. more of that. Maybe that's why they built the school where they did to create, the, you know, the Iowa City label. Hodges steps out of one tackle and rolls into the end zone for another Prairie touchdown. Hodges from 16 yards away. And good for Charles to get that, uh, get that touchdown. He's run the football quite a bit here in, in this possession. Four times he carried the ball that started back on the uh, Prairie 23, another misdirection, but he got the ball, a direct snap right to him. And as you just keep chipping away at it, and you get more experience at running like this, you, you, you know how to get through some of those gaps, find the open areas to run through and get into the end zone. Cedar Rapids Prairie will call timeout after the touchdown. We'll take a break with them and we'll be back on MC22. Back here, and Walter ready to attempt another PAT and give Prairie a 41-point lead. And it is good again. He remains perfect on the night. So with 4.57 left to go, Liberty will get the ball back, and a continuous clock will begin now. After uh, two early season losses, Cedar Rapids Prairie's got into its groove. Got that running game going. 
has added in some passing attack, but as you see with Charles Hodges on this touchdown run, how deep that uh, Coach Mark Bliss can go. Prairie will move to three and two and will be, I would think, a heavy favorite to win against Cedar Rapids Washington next Friday night in the regular season finale. If they can win that, obviously they would move to four and two on the regular season as the playoffs then begin. Yeah, they're gonna need that win against Wash next week because you gotta take that momentum into the playoffs. Uh, you know, it's obviously a, a different kind of playoff system this year. I'm not quite understanding it completely, but um, you know, with four A's being, having the fewer uh, fewest teams, you know, you, you have uh, less rounds that you have to play to get to where you need to go. And, you know, there's a lot of good football teams out there in 4A, I think it's a little bit more balanced this year than maybe it has been in the past. You know, Dowling's still very good. They've got seven titles in a row. I'm not Crazy, quite sure that it? they have that, that kind of football team this year. I know Ankeny Centennial beat them uh, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. So it, it looks as if that maybe 4A's up in the air. We see Bettendorf might be down a little bit. Iowa City West has another good football team. Yep. That's who we'll see next week. Iowa City West and Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Well, and how will, you know, the fact that Iowa City West also hasn't played very many games this year. It'll yeah. be interesting well, to see like, if that has an impact. Just on like them. Iowa City Liberty, they, yeah. they've been shut down since uh, yep. after their second game of the year. Having a little trouble with the tee. <laughs> now we finally got it set. I thought the ball just didn't want to stay upright. It certainly didn't seem to. McGuire Venable will kick it off this time for Prairie. And the kick comes to the right side and touched and out of bounds it goes. As Willis Newell gave it a love tap at the 20 yard line. <laughs> Helped it out of bounds a little bit, did he? Yep, Bob. Uh, do you want to go over here, Bob? Yeah, it's just been uh, you know one of those nights for Iowa City Liberty, trying their very best that they can, just couldn't get any consistency uh, going against a really good Cedar Rapids Prairie football team. Jeff Gordon and staff still, you know, working on building that program. You know, I think even they have s some. Um, being unsure about you know where their athletes are going to be coming from and, and more students because I think uh, Liberty uh, is uh, still uh, continuing to grow and some of those uh, kids depending on you know where they live in Iowa City are going to be floating out this way you know? and of course North Liberty growing that they're going to draw from there too. Yeah, those two communities uh, is growing right together. Peoples got the last carry and he'll get this one as well up to the 30 yard line. Very close to first down. And they'll move the chains. Fake to Peoples. And it's a quarterback keeper for the new QB in there, Ty Hughes. We've, of course, seen him some off and on throughout the course of the night, both he and McKinney at the quarterback spot. And Prairie's going even deeper into its, uh, its uh, roster. Get more players out of the field. Hughes again. Keeps his feet. Nice job of remaining with that balance. And he is going to go all the way down the sideline and finally gets knocked out of bounds at around the 26-yard line. Nice run. Good wheels. He's got some nice speed. Once he got through that initial line of scrimmage, got around the linebackers. Here, here's the read option fake. Had both of those defensive ends faking on him, and then he uh, was able to elude a tackler. Cade. 
Is it Holland? H-A-H-L-E-N. Yep. Made the stop down at the 28-yard line after a 39-yard run. Peoples keeps it this time. Reverses field, follows the quarterback who threw a nice block for him, and he'll get all the way down to the six-yard line. First and goal to go for Liberty. Well, he started off going to the right side, and the pursuit for Cedar Rapids Prairie was to his right, so he saw the wide open gap to his left. First through it to get to the seven yard line. Hughes will get into the end zone for the touchdown. Liberty offense marching right down the field against that second team Prairie defense and in some instances third team on that drive. Look how long he rides. He doesn't even ride it for that run fake, Bob. Yeah. And, it, you know, Prairie still couldn't get any, any defenders right. there other than from the outside, and that's what he wanted to do so he could slip between them. point is up and it is good converted and that makes it 48 to 14 well, good for Cedar Rapids or for Iowa City Liberty uh, Bob to be able to get a little momentum you know get uh, try to gain back some of the respect if you will they knew they were out man coming into this game but they were going to give it a heck of an effort They'll be going to Batesfield to take on City High next Friday night to conclude the regular season. That play, or that drive, I should say, six plays, 80 yards in the eight-yard run by Hughes. So Prairie will have to run at least three or four plays, three for sure, on this possession for the minute 47. They won't be in any hurry to get up to the line of scrimmage and snap the ball and uh, get the play run. See the Liberty schedule. Just seems weird to uh, look at that on the screen and see that they literally will play just four games during the regular season this year. No doubt. Unfortunate, but I think they're lucky to be playing anyway, uh, yeah. Bob, considering what's what's happening uh, you know, around the globe, and especially here in the United States of America. I told a friend of mine today that I was uh, calling a high school game tonight, and he goes, I wish we had high school football. Oh, really? He's in the state of Illinois. Oh, yeah. They canceled all their high school football, yep. did they? Yeah, oh, not playing at all. Well, that's true because there have been plenty of athletes who have transferred to states where they are playing football, and Iowa has been right. one of them. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to make the right decision and try to keep everything going, moving forward, and yet uh, make, every, make it safe for everybody around, whether you're athletic or, or you know, out for a sport or sit in the stands or you're in an office building somewhere. I guess the safest place would be out there probably, you know, in, in, the, in a cornfield hunting pheasant. <laughs> Onside kick, bounding into the air and grabbed out of the air by Cedar Rapids Prairie's Tyler Rowling. Tyler Rowling, Tyler, part of the hands team that's out there. Frank Miller on the tackle knowing that onside kick was going to be coming. And the final few plays will happen now with just a minute 45 to go. There's Prairie's schedule, as you see. Of course, they lost the game at Iowa City High. You know, as Iowa City High, Iowa City West, and Liberty were all uh, in quarantine. And Liberty calls timeout. Uh, Liberty. Been short a guy. So, are you enjoying all of the uh, political advertising? <laughs> There's a little bit, isn't there? You know, Bob, I was thinking the other day, I'm going to just start uh, recording all of the negative ads that I. Uh, 
that I hear or see. And I'm going to note who the negative ad is to, and I'm going to, and, and, the, mo and the person who, who has the most negative ads against them is going to get my vote. I thought you were going to say that uh, you were going to uh, vote for the people who weren't running negative ads. And I was like, good luck finding somebody on the ballot, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, they're few and far between. Yes, they About are. About one out of every four commercials you <laughs> see are uh, here. At the 42-yard line. Nice gain, oh. but a fumble. He was using one hand to uh, keep on the lead blocker, and then the next thing Braden Kolasik knew, he didn't have the ball in the other arm anymore. Oh gosh. He had it ripped out of his arm as he was. I think he was going to try to skip to the outside. I think he had some open room to run with. Oh, Watch yeah. him. He had real estate. He followed no Charles doubt about Hodges. It. He got a Hodges. Oh. <laughs> yeah, his, uh, Hodges <laughs> knocked the ball out of his arm. He had grabbed on the back of Hodges' jersey to try to guide him to where he wanted him to block, and the ball pops out of his arm. Oh, yeah, you, uh, you got to remember <laughs> the blocker in front of you has elbows that can dislodge the ball. That was a uh, good looking play until that happened, though. You were right. He had a lot of real estate in front of him. And he's doing a good job following that lead blocker, but the elbow jumped up and got the football. Well, they, they're going to throw the ball on every play so they can, you know have as many plays as possible and use as little time as they as left on the clock. They'll run it on this play right up the middle for big yardage inside the 35 to the 34. Good thing they weren't listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> and North Liberty unfortunately has an injured player. I believe that's Henry Lucy that was slow to get up. Well, you know, even, even on a chilly night, uh, players are, are exerting a lot of energy. Problems with you know with their muscles and cramping up. You know, it's 48 degrees. Not a bad night. No, no, nope, not at all. But it's chilly. It would be a very chilly night if the wind were blowing now. Ooh, yes, it would. But that's what I like so much about this being calm. And now that we, you know, see the moon again, it's further up in, into the sky yeah. as the, the Earth continues to rotate. And, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that was little, funny. Little <laughs> <laughs> now that right there is <laughs> sorry. Oh, you thought you thought the moon was was moving on its own, huh? <laughs> oh goodness. I see a star up there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must be Mercury right uh, next to it, isn't it? Uh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, not next to it, but you know, in the line of view that we yeah. have there. Oh, goodness, Bob. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this 34-point game has crept to a halt, and things are getting crazy up in the booth. we got to get that uh, continuous clock going again. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, Lucy seems to be okay. Yeah, well, we got to get our get our short order list in there, Bob. <laughs> be ready for post game. Throwing deep and in and out of the hands of the defender down there. The pass thrown by Ty Hughes. He wanted to get it to Griffin Kraft on that play. RJ Ward doing a nice job of covering with him, not letting him get behind. He was, you know, really delivers a nice ball here, but you'll see RJ is in front of the receiver. And when you're in front of the receiver, it, it's really tough to throw a pass long to have your receiver run underneath it. Second down, 10 at the 33-yard line. Hughes ran into a pair of defenders inside the 25-yard line. Everybody pops back up. Well, they're still going at it away from the ball, too, aren't they, on that play? Yeah, they are. Well, it's still very competitive. LaGrange took him up in the air and dropped him at the 24-yard line. Third down, Hughes to throw again. And it is intercepted again. RJ. 
Same intended receiver, same defender, and a little different result this time. Instead of it being knocked away, he comes up with the pin. RJ doing a nice job of disciplining himself to stay right with his receiver, staying in front of him. And again, look at him, he's out in front. Pass thrown over the top, and there's RJ timing it nicely to go up and bring down that interception. Well, the receiver had a little bit of helmet too, so a wonderful job to be able to hang onto that football. Great concentration. With just 34 seconds to go. Prairie is about to head back north on I-380 with their third win of the year. And the Hawks will take a knee, and that will do it. 48-14, Prairie will head home with their third win of the year. And the Iowa City Liberty Lightning will drop to one and two with their season finale next week, as we'll have Cedar Rapids Prairie as they take on Cedar Rapids Washington next week. Yeah, absolutely, as the two coaches here, Mark Bliss, uh, giving the thumbs up to Jeff Gordon. And, you know, the social distancing has kept these teams from being able to congratulate one another after a game like this. but. Uh, certainly a hard-fought win for Cedar Rapids Prairie. You know, it's a large margin score, but they had to earn it. We'll be back with post-game next on MC22. High School Football on Mediacom MC22 is brought to you by McGrath Family of Dealerships, Five Seasons Tire, The Tom Riley Law Firm, Collins Community Credit Union, Heartland Hearing Center, and by Extreme, powered by Mediacom. We are back as you see the final score. It was all Cedar Rapids Prairie tonight by a final score of 48 to 14. Tough for Iowa City Liberty having not played since early September, but they had their moments tonight in this game, and early on they hung right with the Hawks. As much as they could, uh, they, they had some uh, good plays, but more bad than not, uh, they, they hurt themselves a lot. But Cedar Rapids Prairie with a very solid defense, short uh, short possessions that uh, they allowed Iowa City Liberty, but set that, that Prairie offense that just keeps pecking away, that running attack, the, the mixed, uh, the way they mix their plays, their running plays, and, and then throw in a nice little passing attack. Cedar Rapids Prairie is going to be a, a team to have to be reckoned with down the stretch. Absolutely. Nick Pearson led the way, as he always does, on the ground, leading Prairie to the win. Next week, the regular season concludes. MC22 will have Cedar Rapids Kennedy at Iowa City West. For Jerry Koala, this is Bob James. Thank you for joining us for high school football tonight on MC22, your local programming leader.